Yes people, how's it going? Welcome back to Lily White Lane, Manchester City 3, Tottenham Hotspur 3, we own Manchester City baby, what a result, what a performance from an injury riddled Tottenham Hotspur side and where are all the Ange haters, where are all the opposition fans who this week have been waffling about Ange Postecoglou being out of his depth and being an idiot if he goes to the Etihad and plays attacking football, where are they? Where are all the people who called out Ange Postecoglou and said that if he plays a high line at the Etihad, Tottenham will get absolutely destroyed? Where are those people? I can't see them. I can't hear them tonight on socials. They're nowhere to be seen. Back this manager. Every successful manager in the history of football has stuck by their way of playing no matter what. And as they've got more quality, as I say, in that team, the style of play has gotten better and better and better. We've seen some fantastic signs at the start of this season and at the start of this rebuild. Yet I've even seen some Spurs fans calling Andrew Postecoglou out after a couple of defeats. Rival fans and opposition fans calling him out for being naive and sticking to his way of playing. Today showed why he should stick to that way of playing. Because we're instilling that way of playing into these boys. These boys care. These boys have got fight. And these boys got a fantastic result today at the Etihad against the treble winners. Manchester City. I'll say it again, the treble winners Manchester City. We're in phase one of a rebuild after losing our captain in the summer and finishing eighth last season. Yet this season we've contended and arguably deserved to beat Arsenal at the Emirates. We battered Manchester United at home. We beat Liverpool at home and we've gone to the Etihad and picked up an absolutely fantastic result and point. And in the second half we did outplay them. First half I think we were lucky not to be 4 or 5 one down, to be honest. Doku had that chance to hit the bar. Haaland had a couple of big chances, as I say, but we rode our luck. And in the second half, we were the better team. We had more possession in the second half, more chances, more shots. And we deserved to come back into that game, as I say. Game starts off quite quickly. Manchester City, as I expected, you know would have early possession, but Tottenham Hotspur are the ones who break the deadlock. It's a brilliant goal from Hyung min Sun, but straight after, he scores an own goal. And look, I've seen a lot of people criticising Hyung min Sun for that own goal. I don't think there's a lot he can do, as I say. Is it really reckless? He doesn't stick his leg right out. It reminds me of Romero's against Arsenal, as I say. We can debate, you know, whether it's reckless or not, but it does take a touch off Bissouma as well, and it is quite unlucky. But look, Manchester City get the equaliser, and I thought, here we go again. They get their second around the 30-minute mark, as I say, and I think, OK, this could be a, uh, a cricket score here. But they, they don't take their chances. They aren't clinical. They head in at half-time 2-1, and we come out in the second half a much better team. I thought Ange's substitution today, especially the first one that he made, Brian Hill off, Hoy Bier on, was absolutely fantastic. Brilliant change, as I say, because one of the big things we were lacking in that in that first half was midfield solidity. Hoy Bier brought that in, as I say. Besuma looks a better player because of it. The Celso looked a better player because of it. And the Celso gets an equaliser in the 80th minute. I was ecstatic, but I also thought... We're not going to keep our heads here. To get anything out of this game, we need to score again. And I was right. Manchester City made it 3-2. But we do score again, which I didn't expect late on. It's a brilliant ball from Brennan Johnson. As I say, he's one of those players who... He reminds me a bit of Diogo Jota from Liverpool. And what I mean by that is he can do nothing all game. But he did, then he can pop up with a really creative moment and a brilliant bit of play. And he did then again, as I say, he didn't do much all game. But he had a couple of good moments. And he whipped in a fantastic ball. And Kulisevsky... Dives into the air, very much reminded me of Harry Kane's goal against Man City the other year at the Etihad and gets us an equaliser. Such an underappreciated player, Kulisevsky. What a player. The amount of people who were saying they wanted to let him go in the summer after one average season, even in if you know, even in his most average season, and quite a poor one by his standards, he was still better than 80% of the wingers in the Premier League. He was still so solid last season. He also had an injury for a couple of months. And so far this season, he's been absolutely fantastic. He really has. He's contributed so much to play. He's held up the ball on the right-hand side as an uh, also as an attacking midfielder over the last couple of games. And he showed again today that he can play that attacking midfielder role so, so well. Look creative, held it up well. He was outstanding today and has been recently. He gets the equaliser, as I say, a bit of controversy at the end, you know, it wouldn't be a Spurs game without a bit of controversy. We've had quite a bit surrounding us this season, whether it be controversy, as I say, where we're the ones moaning when we took on Arsenal and we said Nketiah should have been sent off and it weren't a penalty, or whether it be other teams moaning, such as the Liverpool one. Rightly so, to be honest. And City fans, as I say, have every right to get annoyed. You know, 
Is he one on one with the keeper there, Grealish, when he's played in? No. He's still got two players around him, two Spurs players next to him, as I say. But is he away and could he create something? Yes. And what I didn't understand is why the ref played on. And then when the ball's played in a few seconds later, about three seconds later, he pulls it back for a foul. At first I thought, okay, it's offside. And then I see that he pulled it back for a foul. He's miles onside. And I just didn't really understand that, to be honest. I didn't really understand that, to be honest. But at the end of the day, as I say, we got the result. That is all I care about. All I care about today, that Tottenham Hotspur stopped this run, as I say, because it was looking very much like it was going to be four defeats on the bounce. And it doesn't matter, as I say, about the circumstances. That's not good for confidence. In all four of our last games, we've played really well, to be honest. But, you know, at the end of the day, when all said and done, four defeats in a row is four defeats in a row. There's no, you know, pussyfooting about that. It would have been very frustrating. It would have been a huge knock for the confidence. But now we head into that game against West Ham with confidence. The fact... That an injury riddled side missing Madison, missing Van der Ven, missing Romero. What could have we done today if we had those players, as I say, can, you know, really put up a fight against Manchester City? An injury riddled Spurs can really give it a go at the Etihad, dominate possession. You know, we dominated possession against Arsenal at the Emirates, a team who are renowned for, you know, keeping the ball. And in that second half, I think we had, you know, for most of it, like 71 possession or something stupid. We were really good with the ball, created chances, as I say. Let's go through the player ratings now. Vicario, I'm going to give Vicario a 7. I thought he claimed the ball quite well, let's say, from a couple of set pieces. Didn't necessarily do anything outstanding. And there's not a lot he could have done about the you know three goals he's conceded here. Just like the four against Chelsea, there's not a lot he could have done about those. Not a lot he could have done about the goals here. Same as Aston Villa, you know. You see loads of goals flying in. Some might, you know, have a little dig at the keeper for that because obviously he's the one who's meant to stop them. It's as simple as that. But... You can't really blame him, as I say. He couldn't do much about those goals. I'm going to give him a 7. Back 4, I'm going to give Destiny Udoji a 7 as well. First half, I thought he looked quite shaky. Second half, he looked a lot more like himself. Linking up play, more confident on the ball. Udoji gets a solid 7. Nothing unbelievable from him, but a solid performance. Royale, I'm going to have to give him a 5. I've got to be honest, as I say, our attack bailed us out here. Because Royale was really, really poor. Especially in that first half. And... You know, if you're giving it away under pressure, not fair enough, but I can understand that. But he played out of the pressure that City, you know, brought onto him quite well at times. But he seemed to give it away when he had the most easiest passes on. So, Roy Allen going to give a five. Didn't really, you know, fix up, look sharp like Divi, uh, Divi? like Dizzy Rascal, Divi Rascal. I've just created an artist. He didn't really fix up, look sharp like Dizzy Rascal in the second half. So, I'm going to give him a five. I'm going to give Emerson a five. Ben Davies. Not as bad as Emerson, didn't really make any huge mistakes, a couple of good bits of defending. I'm going to give Davies a six, you know, still could have done a little bit better, especially for the um for the second goal, completely loses his man and it sends the defence into chaos. But didn't make any huge mistakes, looked quite comfortable on the ball, played out quite well. I'm going to give him a, uh, a, a six, I'm not going to give him a seven because I think, you know, whilst it weren't a mistake, he was pretty much at fault for the second goal. So I'm going to give Ben Davies a six. Right back, Pedro Poro. I'm going to give the guy another seven. Been absolutely fantastic, you know, since James Madison's injury. I know he's a right back, but when he inverts into that midfield and creates chances, he's been one of our best players, I'd say. Him and Kulu have just been outstanding. I'm going to give him a seven today. Not anything outstanding, but did his job defensively. Stopped Doku, as I say, having too many chances in that first half. And, yeah, did a, uh, did a really good job on Grealish when he came on in the second. So... I'm going to give Pedro Poro a 7. Moving on to the midfield. First midfielder, Bissouma. I'm going to give Bissouma a uh, 6. Or so. I'm going to give him a 7. I'm going to give him a 7. I was thinking about a 6. Because the first half performance from Bissouma was quite poor. And, you know, I couldn't really understand it. Because first five games of the season, the goal was absolutely phenomenal. But since, you know, the Arsenal game, he looked quite poor. You know, maybe it was a red card against Luton that made him a little bit worse. But he's looked... Almost too comfortable on the ball to the point where he's given it away far too easily. And he did that in the first half a few times. You know, second half was much, much better. Yes, Man City's third goal, he loses it, but it's played into him in a dangerous area. I'm not going to go in on him because he linked up play really, really well in that second half. So Bizuma, I'm going to give him a seven because of the second half performance. He was one of our best players, looked more like he did in those first few weeks of the season. 
Moving on to the next midfielder, Giovanni De Celso. I'm going to give an eight. Another game for Gio, another goal. And these weren't, as I say, clear-cut chances. Two goals from outside the box. The one against Villa has a deflection, but it's a it's a really good strike. He's got to take it on. And today against C, I was thinking, play in sun, play in sun. He didn't. Absolutely brilliant finish. I, say. I think Edison gets a touch, but that's not all. Could have Edison done better. Edison did, you know, good to get anything when that it was a fantastic strike. Precision, power, placement. Brilliant from Gio. And yeah, linked, you know, play up really well. Is he going to fill the void from Madison? No. And it's, you know, a different... Yes, we're playing, you know, a similar style of play without Madison. But it's it's a different way that we run that midfield without him. Obviously, Kulisevsky is more of the uh, more of the attacking footballer. So it's a different way how we create chances. But, you know, when he came in, I'll, I was one of the people questioning him. I thought, could he replace Madison? Can he really step into that midfield doing the job of someone such as Ben Tanker or Saar? He really has done. And now, you know, it's it's, it's food for thought for Ange. Even when Ben Tanker comes back next February and when Saar comes back mid-December, do you keep Gio? in that midfield because the effort's been there and the ability in the last couple of games he looks so much more comfortable in an attacking team than he does a defensive one you know look at him for Argentina and under Ange he's been brilliant whereas under Antonio Conte and Jose he was quite poor I'm not blaming those managers because I think you recruit for the managers you bring your players for uh, the managers not you know bring your managers for the players but he does look a lot better under a uh, under attacking manager and you know, playing attacking football. So Giovanni Lo Celso, I'm going to give an 8. Kulisevsky, 10 out of 10. I don't care. I don't care. My player ratings. I don't care if he hasn't scored a hat-trick. Absolutely brilliant from Kulisevsky. Every time he got the ball, he held it up brilliantly. He created chances. He got us set pieces. He got us corners. And he scored the goal that gets us a point against Manchester City and it wasn't put on a plate for him either it was a good ball from Brennan but he has to jump over his man get the height and then get it on target as I say and it's a brilliant header off the bar and in Kudasevsky was just absolutely outstanding today contributed so well to the way we played he's been brilliant the last few weeks and yet you know apart from scoring a hat-trick I'm not sure there's more he could have done in his position a 10 out of 10 for me constitutes and and is a perfect performance for me the way he was meant to play today, he did it. He did it absolutely perfectly. It was a perfect, uh, perfect. I'm creating words. I can't speak properly. It was a perfect performance from Kudasevsky. I'm going to give him a ten out of ten. Brilliant stuff from him today. Brian Hill on the left. Interesting one. This. I don't think he was that bad, but I also think that he was too lightweight for this game against Villa. He looked better than he did today. And, you know, for our first goal, he links up really well. It's a lovely bit of play for him. And at times, he can look really, really skillful. But at times, as I say, he just gets barged off the ball far too easily. I'm going to give Brian Hill a six. I'm going to give him a six. Young Min Sun today, I'm going to give him a really solid performance from Sunny. Got another goal. That's his ninth of the season. Been outstanding for us this season. And, yeah, where are all the Sun haters that I was calling out after the Wolves game and after last week? He was absolutely fantastic today. This is what professionals do. After one poor performance, because against Wolves, he just had no service. After one poor performance against Aston Villa, where he stayed off, uh, you know, offside for the whole game, he stayed on today, created chances, got one real decent chance and put it away fantastically. And the own goal, as I say, there really isn't a lot. He can do about it. Really isn't a lot he can do about it. So I'm going to give Hyung Min Sun. I'm going to give him an 8. I'm going to give him an 8. Right wing, Brennan Johnson. You know, it's an interesting one with Brennan Johnson because, you know, I make the comparison to Diogo Jota as in he can, you know, pretty much do nothing all game but then pop up with a fantastic, you know, moment of brilliance. And he did today a couple of times. You know, that run where he played it in and it was cleared by Vardio in the first half where if it isn't, it goes to Sonny for a second for us. You know, and, and in the second half, got the assist, played the dangerous ball that no one else was willing to. Everyone else was playing safe passes at that time. He was willing to take the risk. He's a player who's willing to take risks. who can pop up with a moment of magic. Yeah, he was good today, Brennan. He was good today, Brennan. So I'm going to give Brennan Johnson a 7. I'm going to give him a 7. In terms of substitutions, Oli Skip, I'm going to give a 5. Nearly cost us a penalty and cocked it up for us right at the end. I really don't like the guy. I really don't rate him. I know that's quite harsh, but there you go. You know, that's the way of the world. Hoybier, I'm going to give Hoybier a 7 as well. I thought... No, I, I, I'll take that back. Hoybier's getting an 8. Because when he came on, the midfield looked so much more solid. We were still playing attacking football, but it wasn't stupidly frantic. It, you know, it wasn't literally no solidity whatsoever. He brought that solidity back into the midfield. Played some fantastic passes. Didn't really put a foot wrong. Everything you want from a substitution. He changed the game. 
Ange Postacoglu, as I say, I'm going to give him a rating today. I'm going to give Ange a 9, as I say, because everyone was doubting him heading into this game. Everyone questioned him playing attacking football. We stuck by it. We come away from the toughest ground to go to in the Prem with a point, as I say. And his, uh, his substitution as well, bringing on Huibier, changed the game. Ange Postacoglu gets a 9. Brilliant stuff from Spurs today. What a result. Thank you all for watching this video. Take care of yourselves. All the best. God bless. Have a smashing Sunday evening and week. And as always, commonly Spurs, Enoch and Levy out. In Big Ange, we trust.